Is Taylor Swift the problem? I've explained elsewhere in detail why Taylor Swift is an aware narcissist. If you've not accessed that material so far, I recommend you pause this video and go and look for the Taylor Swift playlist and indulge yourself and learn. The Spectator has posed the question, is Taylor Swift the problem? For a string of intimate partners that have been cast by the wayside, the short answer will be, oh yes. For those class members all those years ago who didn't like her, the answer would be, oh yes. And that is one of the things that exists with a narcissist, that there is invariably a list of varying length of people who regard the narcissist as the problem. Former lovers, former partners, friends, former friends, neighbours, colleagues, family members, the lollipop lady who looks after the children crossing the road, the shopkeeper, an underling. There's a whole list of people that can be compiled under the heading of fell out with the narcissist or see that individual as a problem. Lesser narcissists tend to be dismissive, that if you were to present that list to them, for instance, drawing a line down the middle of a page and putting your name on one side and theirs on the other, and then underneath your name, writing down all the people that you've ever fallen out with, and there's probably really only one person's name there, the narcissist, or if you've had the misfortune to be involved with a few, there might be three or four names, but with the narcissist's name, there's lots of names underneath. The lesser narcissist just dismisses. They're all arseholes. They're clowns, they're idiots. I'm surrounded by fools. The mid-range narcissist is more likely to pick it apart by basically saying, my mother has always been funny with me. That ex was abusing me. That friend was just envious of the promotion I got at work. Those colleagues didn't like me because I was better at the job than them. And they will find an explanation and an excuse for each and every individual on that list to explain why they are the victim why they are the individual that was hated on unnecessarily. When it comes to a greater, their list doesn't actually tend to be as long. The reason being that the greater may not necessarily fall out with people in the way that a lesser or mid-range narcissist does. And even where there is a falling out, the individual doesn't necessarily want to complain so much about the narcissist because it's a combination of the reach and power of that individual they know better than complain about them or that they still have a vested interest because of the strings that that narcissist can pull. If you were to confront a greater narcissist with such a list, they would go, and? They wouldn't shirk from the fact that it showed that there was a number of people that they had fallen out with and they would simply say, when you're in a position that I am in, there's always going to be casualties as a consequence of my ability, fame, popularity, power, whatever they describe it as. And they will just accept it that it is a consequence of being who they are, namely the position they're in, rather than admitting to you, of course, that this is a consequence of their narcissism. The greater narcissist will know that this is a result of their narcissism, but doesn't care because they know that they're superior. With Taylor Swift, the question has been asked whether she's the problem. And Coburn writes, Pop superstar Taylor Swift is in the middle of a PR crisis as her fans overwhelmingly disapprove of her new beau, Matty Healy, the lead singer of English rock band The 1975. Healy has been seen attending Swift's concerts, and the pair have been spotted several times kissing and holding hands in public. Assertion of control through flattering physical means. Coburn's niece tells him that Swift's online fan forums are blowing up with debate over the Midnight Singer's decision to date the irreverent rock star. Fans are horrified that Swift would be associated with Healy given his problematic behaviour, such as laughing along to politically incorrect jokes during a podcast appearance, admitting to watching pornography in which women are brutalised in the same podcast appearance, and doing bits on stage where he pretends he's going to say something racist until his own band drowns him out. Healy also once said, it would be emasculating to date Swift given her massive celebrity. Gasp. Now, with regard to Healy, he shows a number of narcissistic traits himself there. I haven't scrutinised him, but it wouldn't be a surprise to find a performer with strong narcissistic traits. 
doesn't necessarily mean that he's a narcissist and it's a clash of narcissists, but it could be the case that that is what has happened. The article continues by explaining that Swift's budding romance with Healy comes just months after the breakup of her six-year relationship with the vanilla actor Joe Alwyn. See parts pass him. All of this is making Joe look like a saint, LMAO, one fan on the Taylor Swift subreddit, which boasts half a million members, said. I can understand leaving a six-year relationship and rebounding with an asshole because you're having a bit of a crisis or whatever. But once you find out this kind of stuff, wouldn't any decent person be grossed out by it and immediately cut ties, another fan wondered. Well, therein lies a clue. Swift massively endeared herself to her mostly young female fan base when she revealed she would be voting Democrat in the 2018 midterm elections. The following year, she dropped a song and accompanying music video defending the queer community from online hate. All of this, of course, is facade management and cognitive empathy. In a recently resurfaced clip from the 2020 documentary Miss Americana, Swift explained she felt she had to speak out against Republican Senator Marsha Blackburn for being against human rights and Swift's Christian values, nullification of threat to control. To challenge Swift's parasocial fans, none of this seems at odds with dating Healy, who supports Black Lives Matter, advocates for abortion and action on climate change on stage, and denounces conservatism and Donald Trump. The man might love offensive jokes, he is, after all, a man, but he's hardly right-wing. Coburn, who has had his own share of messy relationships, is mostly shying away from passing judgment on the situation. But he would point out that Swift's current single, Antihero, features Swift singing about how she gets older but just never wiser, and is the problem. She has many other songs that hint at the fact that she treated past boyfriends poorly. I broke his heart because he was nice, maybe even cheated. Do you really want to know where I was April 29th? Perhaps the criticism received near the beginning of her career for her constant relationship drama wasn't sexist after all. But at least she's self-aware. Indeed she is. Coburn recommends all of the hysterical Swifties out there to take a deep breath and remember that no one is perfect, not even Miss Taylor Allison Swift. Plus juicy drama makes for effective PR, thanks to the Eras tour and her new romance. Swift occupies a stunning 10 spots in the Billboard 200. Coburn poses the question, is Taylor Swift the problem? The answer is, of course she is, but as a very effective narcissist, she makes it look like she's kind, it looks like she cares, but if you look closely between the lines at the evidence as I have done and explained, you will see that it is all part of her facade management, and that she knows what she is, and she loves to toy with people and find it entertaining when people criticise her rather than getting butt hurt by it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.